Hello again and welcome to another Warhammer 40k Mordian Glory video. We are going to be doing another quick tip tactic today, focusing on the new aid of defense line and how you can use it to make your infantry very durable. Now, before we dive into today's video, I want to make it clear that this is more of a fun tactic than a competitive one. The reason for that comes down to the terrain rules in Warhammer 40k. You see, the Age Defense line is a fortification. And that means that when you're deploying it, it has to remain over six inches away from the terrain features on the board. And unfortunately, this makes using fortifications in the competitive scene very difficult because the terrain on those boards tends to be very, very dense. Having said that, there are plenty of tournaments out there that use player place terrain rules. So if you know you're going to be going to one of those at some point in the future, keep this tactic in your back of your mind because it might be something that you actually find to be surprisingly useful and competitive. But outside of player place terrain, I would say that this is more of a fun tactic that you're going to use with your mates when you're playing your beer and pretzel games down in the basement battle bunkers. But with that introduction and caveat out of the way, let's hold the line, take cover and dive straight into today's video. So the first thing that I want to do is take a look at the Aegis defense line, because this is going to form the foundation on which we build our defensive strategy and our very durable infantry tactics. So the Age Defense Line is a fortification, that is its battlefield role, and it costs about 40 points. And for your 40 point investment, you are going to find yourself with six medium sized bits of barricade, two little end pieces and a large octagonal platform that's slightly raised above the rest of the defense line. That's the bit you can see in the main picture here today. Little side note here, if you're someone that owns the old version of the Age Defense Line, the new version does not come with a defense turret anymore. You used to be able to buy your age defense line and it could come with an optional quad auto cannon or an Icarus Lance cannon. Sadly, those rules are no longer included. You get the big platform and you get the six bits of barricade and that's it. It's just the wall now. Now, the age defense line has no stats to speak of. It doesn't have a movement value, no weapon skill, ballistic skill, strength, toughness, wounds, attacks, leadership or save value, it is essentially an indestructible piece of terrain that you get to place down. And like a terrain piece, it has terrain features. So after this model is set up, it is treated as an area terrain feature with the following terrain traits, as described in the Warhammer 40,000 rulebook. It is a defense line, it is light cover, heavy cover, and defensible. But what's really exciting about the age defense line is the reinforced construction special rule. Each time a range attack is allocated to a model, while it is receiving the benefits of cover from the terrain feature, worsen the armor penetration characteristic of that attack by one to a minimum of zero. This means that by putting infantry behind the age defense line, they essentially get armor of contempt. That's pretty nice. Now, I know there's going to be someone smashing their keyboard right now, putting down the comment section. Wait, does that mean we can use this to get armor content back on our vehicles? Sadly, it doesn't work like that. And the simple reason is that vehicles don't benefit from cover in 9th edition 40k. You can't get light cover on a Lehman Rust, for example. Therefore, because you can't benefit from cover, you cannot trigger the requirements for reinforced construction on the defense line, and therefore you cannot worsen the R penetration characteristic of attacks by one. Sad times, I know, but let's not focus on the negatives. Let's be glass half full rather than glass half empty kind of people. And let's focus on how we can use reinforced construction and the age defense line to make our infantry super durable. And the first crunchy combo I've got for you guys is based on the Death Corps of Krieg. Now, we all know that the Death Corps of Krieg are pretty durable infantry. As a standard, they come with a mini transhuman ability. What I mean by that is they can never be wounded on ones and twos. They can only ever be wounded on threes, fours, fives, or sixes. That means it doesn't matter if you hit them with a volcano lance, if you roll a two to wound, doesn't wound the Death Corps of Krieg. So that's already a pretty nice ability to have. On top of that, for five points, Death Corps of Krieg can take a Medibag, which allows them to ignore the first failed save of each turn. It doesn't matter if that failed save is caused by a Grot Blaster or a Volcano Cannon, your Medic allows you to ignore that first failed save. And that's each turn. So it's a pretty nice durability boost on some line infantry. 
The next ingredient in our delicious durability soup that we're concocting right now is the Industrial Efficiency Regimental Doctrine. Thanks to this regimental doctrine, each time an attack with an AP characteristic of minus one is allocated to a model with this doctrine, that attack instead has an armor penetration characteristic of zero instead. Now, the reason that that regimental doctrine is so tasty with the age defense line is because it actually allows you to ignore AP minus one and AP minus two. Because if someone hits you with an AP minus one attack, then the age defense line goes, hey, look, Pseudo armor of contempt, reduce that AP value down to zero. Great. But then if someone hits you with an AP minus two attack, it gets reduced down to AP minus one. And then guess what? Industrial efficiency kicks in. Suddenly it becomes an AP minus zero attack again. Look at that. Someone needs to hit your infantry with an AP minus three attack just to make you go off your base save. Now, admittedly, if they do hit you with an AP minus three attack, it's going to count as AP minus two. And it is going to kill your guardsman. Unless you take into account that he will have light cover from the age defense line. Which means he'll still get a 6 up save. Very nice. And the delicious combination only gets better when you add in some seasoning with the take cover order. Now how this order works is if you're out in the open, you get the benefits of light cover. If you've already got the benefits of light cover, you get the benefits of Dense cover. Now, dense cover gives you a minus one to hit, which means that you'll be hitting a unit of Death Corps of Krieg with a take cover order with industrial efficiency behind the age defense line at a minus one to hit. They'll have mini transhuman. They'll ignore the first wound. They'll have a four plus save. They'll ignore AP minus one and AP minus two. And even if you hit them with something that's AP minus three, they're still going to get a six up save against that. You literally need to hit a Death Corps of Krieg person with a melter gun before you take his save away from him when he's hiding behind the age defense line with these other combinations stacked on. I don't know what you guys think, but to me, it looks like we just made the annoyingly durable infantry in the guard codex even more annoying and durable. In my mind, that's a big win. But wait, there's more because today's episode is a double doozy. I'm going to give you another way that you can make infantry durable using this tactic. Instead of using Death Corps of Krieg, we're going to mosey on over to some Tempestus Scions. Now, Scions come with a base 4 plus save. Pretty tasty. Behind the age defense line, they're going to have a 3 plus save thanks to the light cover. Even tastier. As with Death Corps of Krieg, if we combine that with the take cover order, we're suddenly going to have a 3 plus save and an inbuilt minus 1 to hit. Which suddenly this thing is getting so tasty, I don't know if I can handle it. But then Scions get to add in some really crazy seasoning because they have a stratagem called Immovable Indoctrination. And what this does is reduce the AP characteristic of an attack by 1 to a minimum of 0. And there's nothing saying that doesn't stack with the Aegis defense line. Remember, this isn't Armor of Contempt. It doesn't say anywhere it can't interact with other rules that reduce your AP. Which means that a unit of Tempestus Scions hiding behind an Aegis defense line with the immovable indoctrination stratagem active would have a 3 plus save and they would reduce all attacks AP by 2. Even if you hit them with a plasma gun, they're still going to have a 4 plus save. Even if you hit them with a melter gun, they're still going to have a 5 plus save. You will need to hit them with something like a volcano cannon to take away their whole save. That is just insanely cool. But it actually goes a step further and you can make sure that you always have a save no matter what. Because you get access to a unique relic as Tempesta Scions for the Refractive Field Generator. This relic can be put on a Scion Command Squad. And all other Scion units within 6 inches gain a 5 plus invulnerable save. So by combining Immovable Indoctrination with the Refractive Field Generator with the reinforced construction of the Age Defense Line, you're creating a fire base of Scions that is highly resistant to all forms of incoming fire. 
But those are just my ideas on how you can use the age defense line to really hold that line. Let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. Do you like these two combinations? Have you got any other ones that you can suggest? Get it down in that comment section. If you enjoyed today's video, make sure you smash that like button and subscribe to never miss an episode. If you really enjoyed today's video or you found it particularly helpful, then please consider becoming a channel member or Patreon supporter. By becoming a supporter, you gain access to a whole boatload of perks, but one of the biggest ones is you gain access to the Mordian Glory Discord, which is an online community of over 700 hundred active members there's always someone in there to talk about tactics lists hobbying painting memes there's all sorts of good stuff going on there so if that sounds like a lot of fun then please consider becoming a channel member or patreon supporter and i just want to take a moment now to say a big thank you to our latest channel members and patrons we've recently had a little bit of an explosion of people joining the channel so i might take a minute or two but i do want to make the effort and say thank you to every single one of them so a big thank you to pj alec the lonely shepherd matthew cappuccino ib hidalago 334 justin cliff robert m alex m jack Son of Boulder, Oliver McDonald, Adrian, Crocodilian, A, Fields Badman69, J Hickman, Kian, Soupskim, CT7479, John, Return of the Mac, Guard Brandon, Axel, the Anglo-Germanic Wanderer, Holden, Dimitri, Rattle, Omega, Zach, Ads, Heretic Dave 40k, Dylan, Ben Andrews, Ryan, Jack Wellings, FRVN underscore six, Murray, Dennis, Shake My Head, Mark Andre, Cherubiel, Nolan, Keith Duran, Adeptus Ridiculous, Total Fan, RC Gunner, Duke of Petchington, Mike, Igra, Richard 9268.1, John John John, David Jensen, Tank Sniper, Azrigar, Wolfenbach, Alan, Sabian, Nick, Dylan, Fisher Fury, Kobold, Ymir, Marshall Diedrich, Glomoff, Robert Lowe, Marcello, David, Lord Biscuit, James Harrison, Sun Gohan, and 101 Sugar High. Thank you guys for becoming channel members. Thank you for doing your part. I also want to do a shout out to the latest Patreon supporters too. So a big thank you to Echo Marker, Potato Wrangler, Dan Dodge, Ragnarokus, Zar Phoenix, Soviet Commubot, Vincent Schwartz, Ads, Gerard, Brian, Paul, Dark One Mushroom, Nick C, Nancy, Victor, Tack, Blazing Baron, Jesse, Michael, David, Colin, Salty, Mr. Joel, Eventure, Adrian, Nathan, Hatman, and Old Bean UK. Thank you guys for your ongoing Patreon support. And last but certainly not least, I want to say a personal heartfelt thank you to all of my top tier Patreon supporters. These are the War Masters, the people that have truly gone above and beyond the call of duty when it comes to supporting the channel. So a massive thank you and an 07 down in the comment section for Bon Bon Vert, Phil French, Ross Miller, Tequal, Alex Dengal, John Stubbs, Nick Walsh, Swordfish Trombone, Diesel Fox, Tom Sutton and Sly Varney. Massive thank you to all of you guys. Your very generous support is a big reason why I'm able to do this channel full time now. So thank you so much. Hope you've all enjoyed today's video. Thank you for watching. And of course, as always, I'll see you guys next time.